Howdy, this is Lucas here. We're going to do a quick five-minute tutorial. I literally set a timer because I keep going over time. No one's got no one's got time to sit around through nine-minute tutorials these days. So check it out. Um, we're going to do a quick uh, ratchet trap drums. Um, just a couple quick pointers that I've been working on lately. Here's what we got. Okay, cool. Same beat that's like used in every single song. Um, so I got these samples off of Splice. So one thing that's really important to understand about Splice and a lot of these sample packs that are coming out, and a lot of people on YouTube, uh, like especially Rick Beato, will say these are canned samples. And what that means is that everything's already done, like they're processed, they're like ready to use, right? So you don't need to do a lot of fancy compression or EQing or anything. Furthermore, we're making like ratchet trap music, so it's not really supposed to sound like really polished and commercial. But anyway, so I literally didn't do much to any of these, but there's two main points that I wanted to make. So we can look at our instrumentation here. So we have kick, snare, I have three different hats. So if you listen to these songs um, in this style, there's always like a bunch of different hats and they're pitched differently. So if you want to get real creative, you can like go in and pitch them and use MIDI and do all that. But I literally just dragged in different hi-hat samples that were naturally different pitches. Three hats, one open hat. So like some type of cymbal, something a little longer. We have this percussion, which is kind of like a bongo sound. Um, a lot of these trap producers use this. Um, so that's cool. And it's usually on like a really specific pattern, and then I have my 808. So, number one, we have adjusted volumes accordingly. So, we don't want to have all these like blasting at the same level. It really makes a huge difference to have everything kind of balanced. So, you're going to want to listen one by one and, and, and dial these in one by one so that you have like a nice volume set up for everything because otherwise it just it doesn't sound good. Second, look at Okay, so if you click this button here, we can open up our channel, right? So when you drag these in from Splice, a lot of them are stereo samples, okay? So that could be great, but in this situation, I wanted to tighten everything up. I want it to be mono. I don't want it to take up so much space because we're going to have someone, someone rapping over this, right? So this is what you do. You can select... If you want to do it, okay, we'll just do it with one track, right? So it'll come like this, um, left and right stereo. So if you hold down option, you can put these in the middle, and then you could link them. And then we got a regular mono pan. So it's crazy because here's the thing, you, you get these samples right in their stereo, and sometimes you'll collapse them to mono like this, and they'll be out of phase, or they have some kind of weird widening plug-in, all this stuff on it. And uh, you may not want that. You may want it. It might be like a reverb snare or something, and you want it in stereo. It's important. But don't hesitate to collapse things to mono, people, because we don't need these little drum sounds like taking up a bunch of space in the mix. Sometimes it is really cool to have like a wide and hi hat or whatever. You'll hear that in music all the time, but you want to understand the difference. Um, it can be really nice to just kind of have things in mono, just leaves you space to pan stuff around or to put vocals, whatever. So to do that for everything, let's say we have a bunch, you can hold shift option command and you can put all these in the middle, right? And then you can also use the same key command, shift option command, open this up and link it. And now we have it all. You know, you can go one step further and, and bounce this out to mono, but this works well for me. So those that's two pointers. Um, I literally did no processing on this. I put these, uh, sorry, I, I put this uh, Brainworks channel strip. So I just, I wanted to run it through like an SSL style console just to get like some, some tightness and dirt. And I basically put everything on a random channel so they sound slightly different but it's really not doing much I think it's it's kissing the compressor a little bit but um, 
So it goes to show, yeah. Oh, that's our timer. So yeah, it just goes to show that you can get uh, some really processed sounds on Splice and really focus on arranging and, and you don't have to do a whole lot of mixing. But um, yeah, I just wanted to point out that mono thing because I think it's really useful. Anyway, I hope it was helpful and uh, have a good one.